Hello, everybody. Welcome to AOMA. And so uh, I'm a teacher here in AOMA, and also I'm teaching TCM Pediatrics uh, as one of the courses offered in the school. And so when talking about pediatrics, I'm going to mention more through the TCM aspect or traditional Chinese medicine aspect to talk about uh, in this uh, subject. And so uh, in Chinese medicine, first we are going to talk about what would be the feature or characteristics we put in the pediatrics in the physiology aspect. There are two major characteristics we put. The first one is that we are having very fragile organs for the children, for the pediatric patient, which means that comparing with adults, they are having like pretty immature and young organs and the function of the organs are not well developed. And they're just like the new sprout of the trees and they are easily being attacked by the external environment and being attacked by the pathogenic factors. So that's why we call them having fragile zhangfu organ or the organs or the functions of the organs. So that's why when they were young, we need to give them more protect comparing with giving to adults or giving to like people who is well developed. The second characteristics in Chinese medicine, we have a concept, special term is called pure yang. But if we translate it in nowadays understanding, which means that the kids has very fast development. So when it started from they were born until they uh, like one year old or two year old, their height and their body weight, their uh, size of the head, everything is going to be like growing faster than adults. So you're not expecting your own body weight is growing like two times or three times in a year, but you can expect on your kids, on the children who's growing. And so because they're having this kind of characteristics, make the pathogenic aspect is different. So uh, one time I was like uh, trying to organize uh, in the clothes of my son uh, when he was newborn. And then we took take out the newborn dress and then compare it with him right now. My husband said, wow, it's amazing. How can we fit him into such kind of small onesies and when, like one year ago? And so you can see that how fast they are growing. And so because of this, when treating diseases or dealing with pediatric problems, you should also consider about first, they are having very fragile body constitution and organs and you should protect their fragile and very gently treating the patients. Do not cause any harm or kind of extra uh, destroy or injury to their body. Secondly, because they have fast development, they also have fast cure. And that's why a lot of time during class, I ask the student, uh, if you want to be like getting famous as a acupuncturist or a traditional Chinese medicine doctor, which departments or subjects you're going to choose in between pediatrics, gynecology, and also the oncology. So actually pediatrics would be one that makes you becoming well-known and famous because you only need shorter time comparing with other uh, departments in the treatment for a pediatric patient. You can have very good result and effect because children them themselves they have very quick recovery very few herbs and short time of treatment the result comes out so this is the second characteristic for the uh, pathogenic pathogenesis aspect and they are going to have fast recovery but also at the same time because they are having like so fragile their disease development would also faster than adults. So that's why you can see that sometimes when children, they're having fever, they can easily go into convulsion or even sometimes goes to emergency situation because they are also developing faster when they are having diseases. So that's why you are going to focusing on accurate on-time treatment, but your result would come like very quickly. And when talking about examination, everybody 
well, some people would have heard about that in Chinese medicine, we usually going to do four examinations. We are going to observe and also asking questions, smelling or kind of uh, hear, listening, and also palpation. We also do these four examinations for children. But the most important one is observation. Because in Chinese medicine, we have one of the same. The pediatric department is called the mute department. You are not going to ask the patients and get feedback sometimes correctly from your patients, especially when they were too young. If you're going to say, um, do you have any hot flashes or any sweating? Like they have no idea what's, what, what is that about? And so that's why we usually say that this is the mute department. You're not going to get too much information through asking questions, comparing with other departments. But you're going to observe through many aspects. So as an example, complexion, color of the complexion would be one of the part you're going to observe and to see what will be the related. And we also divide the color into the different regions on the face, and they would relate it to different parts of the organs in pediatrics. For example, one of the parts we are going to observing is on the root of the nose, and we call it the mountain root, because the nose looks like a mountain on the face. And here is how the mount where the mountain started, we call it a mountain root, root. And this is the area we have very shallow skin, and it is easier to kind of figure out the circulation and how is it the color change if the patient, especially pediatric patient, having any problem. So usually if this area runs into greenish, dark greenish color, usually it's a sign of either foot stagnation or the patient is having convulsion. And actually it's due to the circulation, especially the microcirculation is not going well. And that's why it will manifest into like greenish color or even dark greenish color. But in Chinese medicine, we kind of use it to manifest about patient who's having food stagnation issues or having convulsion issues. And also you can see through, for example, the underneath of eyelids, especially for newborn, right? Looking for if they're having any kind of infant jaundice and due to the high, very high bile, uh, uh, bile in the uh, blood. And so you can also see through the eyelids to see whether they are having this kind of problem. And another thing is that like some of the uh, parents, because at the beginning, the first stage of the baby food, we don't have much choices. And it's either carrots, pumpkin, sweet potatoes. And so after a while, you're giving your kids this kind of high carotene type of food, you would find out that they turns yellow. And so their palms and also their facial complexion turns yellow. That's because like long-term giving this kind of food and the carotene is going to cause the color change, especially stain on, uh, uh, on their face. And so this would be like also including into the observation aspect. And another observation is uh, like body forms. For example, the frontal nail. Like we have two frontal nail, front and the occipital one. And so 25% um, of the baby when they were born and they could have closure of their occipital frontal, frontal nail, which is normal. But usually they should be closed around three to six months. They should be closed. And the frontal front one, frontal nail, Usually, would be closed around the age of tw uh, uh, 12 months and to 15 months. When it is delayed close or even close earlier, all considered as having the problem, having some kind of uh, uh, diseases. In Chinese medicine aspect, we put this into the kidney aspect and we call it the kidney deficiency or the patient who's having any kind of excess pathogenic factor. Especially some, uh, um, some patient will find out that they have the delayed development. They would also go together with the frontal nail closure delayed. And this one, like nowadays, we have the very famous formula is called the uh, six flavor Romania pills. 
and actually was originally designed for the patient who has delayed development, including the fontanelle closure. And so these are the ones that you're going to observe, e even including their urine, their stools, their discharges from any parts of the body, and you should be, pay attention to that. And that's why as a parents or who's taking care of the kids, when you are taking care of them, not only just like feed them or just changing diaper, it's a good idea to pay attention to how they poop every day and is there any special color change in their urine? And this also going to tell you how's the health of the children. And so the next part is about the smelling. And so like their discharge, you also need to like and to smell, especially they're having any kind of sour smelling or having different kind of smelling in their uh, poop or like if the kids is like having vomiting problems, you also need to find out what is the cause. So smelling is also important. Listening, like the kids, when they were young, they don't know how to cough the phlegm out. So how can you identify if they're having phlegm or not? You should listen when they are sleeping or they are quiet, is there any kind of rattling sound in their throat? Or through stethoscope would be another kind of advanced way to find out if they're having rail or anything related, having like bronchial or lung issues. So these will also include into the part. And palpation, to see if any lumps or is the belly soft or having any kind of problems. In Chinese medicine, we know that pulse taking is also a special one. For children, we also have pulse taking, but we should be uh, wait until they are three years older. You would not take any kind of get any kind of uh, uh, pulse information through an under three year old. So that's why we would have a very special way for identify the pulse. It's called the finger observation. We're going to observe the vein on the index finger for the under three year old children. You're not going to find it right now when you're older than three year old, but you, if you have three under three year old, you would find out when they're having like different kind of severity of the disease, the finger uh, vessel is going to go through different stage. Also showing that how is the severity of the diseases. So when talking about treatment, Definitely we have like acupuncture and Asian body work and herbal treatment for the kids. And I would say that for acupuncture treatment for kids, you should first make sure the kid is going to obey when you are needling. Otherwise you're going to kind of have accident during the treatment when they are like playing around. And also for kids, shorter time, less needle. They don't need much of the stimulation. They can have very good result. But body work like Tui Na massage for the kids would be more suitable for them and non-harmful. And another one is using herbal treatment. Herbal treatment, you should pay attention. One thing is dosage. And another thing is that the choices of the mild herbs. Do not choose some very strong, harsh herbs for the kids. They just need very gentle and pretty safe type of herbs. You can have very good results. And one of the example is that uh, so far, knock knock, <laughs> my son is 21 months old and um, he had several times runs into fever and also uh, common cold. Every time I just use very simple herbal formula and helped him to dealing with the, with the common cold. And the most simple one, and every time I saw him like sneezing several times, start to have runny nose, I know that I should start to give him something. Very simply using is just using the ginger and also the onion white, get a little bit brown sugar and warm them up to give him the decoction. This is the way to help him to release this kind of, we call it exterior pathogenic factor and help him to stop the development of the problem and at the very beginning of the treatment. And so that's just some of the brief and general idea how in the t Chinese medicine, we are dealing with the pediatric problems and also some of the features. Thank you. Mm -hmm.